haven't been very cooperative today, Mr. Falk. It's too bad. I don't like being dragged out of my cell for these hearings. Don't you gentlemen understand that I'm meat for Joe Barker? We understand. Mr. Reed and his security people have taken every conceivable precaution. you identify those voices for us, Mr. Falk? Yeah. Joe Barker, Joe's girl Marla, and me. How did you do that? We're on the beach alone, just so uh, things like that couldn't happen. I know. I have no information. No, I'm nothing. I have absolutely nothing to tell you. The first thing you do when you get there is contact Bob Miller in the DA's office. He's working for us now. He'll introduce you to our judges, Stafford and Kramer. did meet Judges Stafford and Kramer. Yes, yeah, sure. Did you say yes? Yes, I said yes. We'll want to hear more about that tomorrow morning, Mr. Falk. Gentlemen, we stand adjourned until tomorrow at 9 a.m. You get a statement? Hey, hey. Come on now, how did you guys do it? Joe, me, and Marla on the beach, nobody else? Forget it. Yes. Whoever thought of that bracelet ought to get a medal. Marla Hayes. Little Miss Marla's charm bracelet. You bugged it, didn't you? Falk's in number one. Stop both of them. Downstairs.
Both elevators are stuck somewhere in the building. They don't know where. Lasker, go to the street floor. You fellas follow me. We're going up to the roof. Asher here. Send a car along to uh, 4th Street and fast. Wake up, baby. You got a date with Joe Barker. Okay. Right. No leads, nothing. They're away clean. You're coming? Jump shot, Doug. Hey, that's good, Will. Now keep working on the follow through, huh? Back in line. Inspector Warfield, your office. Emergency. Oh, sorry. Thanks a lot for the help. Sure. See you next week, kids. Barker, five years ago, couldn't get a conviction. And uh, Marla Hayes, narco bust. She's clean. And how long has she been working for you? A year. Been Barker's mistress for four. She got disgusted, came to us, asked if she could help. She has. Potentially, he's the most important informant we ever had. That's why I want him back alive. I'd like to hang on to you, sir. Sure. 
Falk gets a chance to fill Barker in, he'll be able to cover his tracks. We'll have to drop all those mass arrests we planned for next week. And all the leads we use will be useless. How come Barker didn't have Falk killed? Well, the way I figure, he'd like to know what Falk spilled. Uh, what judges, what uh, politicians, lawmen are still clean. Corruption's expensive. Why start over when you don't have to? Mm hmm <laughs> Well, you took this off a charm place that Barker gave to Marla. Duplicated it, put a bug in here. Yeah. Falk's on to it. He'll spill as soon as he sees Barker. And Barker will kill her. No way to warn her. She's with Barker in Mexico in syndicate business. We're trying to locate her. All we really know is that they're due back at the farm day after tomorrow. When I say farm, I really mean a uh, fortified enclave. The latest in electronic security. No way to penetrate it secretly. <laughs> What do you want? A pastrami. A uh, pastrami and celery tonic. Three Jake specials, uh, two coffee and a celery tonic. An order for yourself, Roz. Thanks. What's wrong with your finger? It blocked a hook shot. Hold it right here. Beehives between the house and the beach wall. What do we got? So far, category one. Beekeeper, Southern California area. Beekeeper. Right about Barker having a room bugged. What's that? Hmm? Oh, that's Carrie's pastrami sandwich. Do you think she'd mind? No. Got it. Category two, stock car racer. How do you intend to get into the enclave yourself? Tony Boyd. He's one of Barker's top young guys. Barker trusts him. I'll get in through him. We don't know where Boyd is. He's got a girlfriend in Los Angeles, April Tierney, right? April Tierney. Beautiful snake. Hi. Holding up? Oh, yeah. Category three, Archer. I had a date last night. Yeah, so did I. It was someone I liked. It's not easy to find. You're too picky, Carrie. <laughs> Look who's talking. I also didn't get to do my laundry. Emmett Jurgens. OK. So your computers came up with him. Stock car driver, a medal-winning archer, and a beekeeper. You know, that's quite a combination. I didn't think there were any of those left these days. Look, let me spell out how I feel. Hmm? You know, we're betting three lives on this amateur. Falk, Marlis, and his. A non-pro, a one-shot. Only as a last resort. If we come up with Falk first, we scratch. What's Marla Hayes' recognition code? Her perfume. Corel is a special label. Mr. Reed, 
There are no pros with the combination of skills we need. Sure. And just what does your Mr. Jurgens do if something goes wrong? Does he do the job? Or does he freeze? Big deal. Told you how to change those new tires. Not enough to them. You told me a lot of things, buddy boy. Trouble is, you're only right half the time, man. I never know which half I'm listening to, you understand? What do you want me to do? Well, sir, old tires were better than new tires. I think you better order me a set of new old tires. That makes sense? I'll order it. Will you? You do that. See you tomorrow, okay? Mr. Jurgens. What? Mr. Jurgens. You call me Mr.? People call me Mr. Usually bill collectors. Not this time. Carrie Donovan, Department of Justice. Uh-oh. I knew I shouldn't have deducted that trip to Las Vegas. Mr. Jurgens. Mr. Jurgens, uh, you've only said two sentences, and I already know that you're late with your bills and you fudge on your income tax. Now, that's in addition to everything else I know about you. Which is what? What I'd like to talk to you about. This is April Tierney. Thank you. OK, girls. Let's move it. Doug Warfield, Department of Justice. <clears throat> what can I do for the Department of Justice? Maybe better you should do something for Doug Warfield and Tony Boyd. Tony who? I've got something valuable for him. Like? Like he'd make a lot of points with Joe Barker. You'll have to explain that. Where? I live at 14 Harmon Road, apartment 5D. I'll be there in an hour. I have to count calories. Ice water instead of loose. Radishes instead of fillets. <laughs> I'm a sybarite with very few pleasures to enjoy. Here. <sighs> I think you do all right. Looks all right to me. What are you selling? What do you want with Tony? Ah, oh, well, that's between Tony and me. Well, maybe we ought to leave it that way, then. OK, all right, all right. Uh, I've been part of the team questioning Dave Falk. I can give Tony everything that Falk told us, which ought to make him even bigger with Joe Parker than he already is. 
Well, if you can believe the papers, Barker's already got Falk. Why does he need you? <laughs> Falk can say anything, anything he wants to save his life, can't he? How do I know you're not just a cop looking for Tony? Why? What's he done lately? Nothing. All right, then use your head. I'll be alone. He won't. Do I look stupid? No, you look good. You married? No, no. <laughs> What's the problem? Gambling? <laughs> no, no. Uh... Booze? No. Then why are you turning Fink? Well, because I've been with the department 15 years. You know, got any idea what my paycheck looks like? Maybe, just maybe once in my life, I'd like to buy something like you. Anderson. I work for Tony Boyd. In his girl's bedroom? My idea. When you go with Tony, life insurance is kind of expensive, and I didn't know what you're after. You do now. Tony's being careful. He's clean, but he doesn't want any connection with the fall kidnapping. Then I'll go to him. All right. Sunset La Brea, 10 o'clock tonight, southwest corner. Hey, thanks for the drink. My pleasure. No lie. Yeah, operator, I want uh, mobile unit 358. Yeah. Yeah, there's a big guy coming down, silver hair. Follow him. Right. Turn here. You see the parking building up ahead? Go in there.
the thing is, uh, me, Emmett Jurgens, I'm supposed to get the new bracelet charm to the undercover girl. <laughs> is that it? Inspector Warfield will be in the house. Uh, uh there's no offense, but uh, is there some place I can uh, check up on you? <laughs> you can call Washington. Uh-huh. She's authentic, Mr. Jurgens. Well, uh, you can't blame me for wondering. No, sir. Yeah. Well, I'm, uh... All right, no, I'm still thinking about it. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, bye. Inspector Warfield. Hey, Bob. We're just about finished. All right, I'll have a look around. Now, now th there's not going to be any hard sell, Emma. If you say no, I've got two other prospects, both less qualified. If they turn me down, we'll, we'll have to scrap this approach. Maybe we'll come up with something, maybe we won't. You know you picked a loser. You know that? What do you mean? Well, I mean... You know how long it's been since I won a race? How long? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I really don't know. That's how long it's been. We're not asking you to win a race. You're asking me something a lot more important. Duty now, I say so. <laughs> oh boy! All right, you win. All right, all right. That's right, you win. I uh, see. I, 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 you know, I got no real reason to help you. So I, I say to myself, I say, if she's uh, human enough to have a beer, I go, man. But if she's some kind of machine like those. Uh, Computers, you know, she works for. Just forget it. <laughs> I think you got a better reason than that. Well, yeah. So old Joe Barker likes health foods and honey. And uh, you know something? He's sure not in a healthy business, is he? All right, Emmett. This, this is Marla's room. That one there. Mm-hmm. Tell me this when I fire. How do I know that, uh, Marla? Who's going to tell me that she's alone in her room? Well, there are no other women in the enclave, so when you see a light come on here, you'll know that she's alone and it's safe. Oh. This is the room that Barker's had specially bugged for visitors. That's where I expect to wind up with Falk. Yes? We've given up trying to intercept Falk before he reaches the enclave area. It's up to you and Jergens. And we expect Joe Barker and Marla to arrive at the Enclave tomorrow evening. So, you've got 24 hours. Hey. You ever been anything but a cop? What's the difference? asking. Don't you ever mix business with pleasure? <laughs> you better go see Tony. Not yet. I 
want you to know I like you. Inspector. Now I suppose we have some explaining to do. No, no, I don't think so. I think it's pretty clear. Mr. Anderson here works for you, not for Tony Boyd. Uh, April. Oh, April. Let's just say I have lots of friends. Sure you're making the right move? Mm-hmm. I know Frank Mulvey's dossier very well. He's very big in the juice rackets, but you know, I think maybe you were better off with Tony Boyd because Tony Boyd is very big with Joe Barker. And the word around is that Joe Barker is going to walk all over Frank Mulvey. <laughs> is that the official Justice Department evaluation of my chances against Barker? I have a good organization, lots of money, but not enough connections in the right places. Is that it? Something like that. Well, that's why you're here, Warfield. You know all about Joe Barker's connections. You got your information from David Falk. And you're going to give me everything you have. Me or nobody. I'm sure you understand. What's the difference, Doug? Frank's money's as good as Tony's. Okay, I'm a realist. Good. April, you know what the man brings. Now, where's the material on for? Well, I wasn't planning on giving it away, you know. <laughs> you don't really have a choice. But how much? 50,000. 25. Okay, there's a notebook in the mattress in my hotel room. The Rexford, room 810, but the key's at the desk. My man doesn't need a key. Hope they're no hard feelings, Doug. Just business. Can't Warfield just give her this thing? They'll search it. And anyway, may not get to see her in time. Uh, you have to hit one of the rondelles, or you risk alerting the whole house. Is something wrong? No. I've been thinking about Tony Boyd. So have I. When he finds out I sold out to you. Yeah. A lot safer if he was dead. Do unto others before they do unto you. Trouble is, he's not easy to get to. Uh -uh. Hey, uh, April can fix that. She hasn't told Tony about me yet. She could do that now. Hey, you want me to set Tony up? Is that it? You know where he is? <sighs> yeah. Let's say he's at a friend's place on Old Channel Road. <sighs> What's it worth? <laughs> oh, two, maybe three big ones a month. Huh. You'll be able to give up ice water and radishes, April. Okay. Oh, hope I see you again, Doug. Yeah, sure. Rebalancing the arrow. 
said it won't work. Now, look. I said there wasn't going to be any high pressure, and there wasn't. You're in it now. You're committed. They're depending on you. There's no one else. Yeah. You know, I could, uh... You kind of turn me on, you know. You know that. Now, what am I supposed to say to that? That, that you can have me if you stick to your job. <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to tell you something. I mean, it's... Better still show me something. Nothing. There's nothing here. Yeah, I'm sure. He says there's no notebook. He's a liar. Steve, he says you're a liar. Come on back. The notebook was there. He's keeping it for himself. Warfield. Where is the notebook? You ask your man. Gentlemen. <laughs> Oh, come on, fuck it. There. You did it. Oh. Uh. Gary, I'm sorry about uh, I don't want to apologize for the past back there. I wasn't going right, you know, and you've seen the pictures of the other pretty girl kisses you when you win the race, but uh, that's not when you need it, is it? Okay. I'll accept that. approached by a federal agent today. Let's forget that for now. No, it won't wait. He was in on the day Falk interrogation, and he knows everything Falk told him. He wants to sell tonight. You interested? What's his name? Doug Warfield. Wants to meet you. What do you say? <laughs> How do I know he's legitimate? I think he is. Oh, you think, huh? Mm-hmm. How much? I don't know. It could give us a check against what Fox built. Mm -hmm. If he's on the level. Mm -hmm. I'll set it up. I 
caught this dude outside. Hello, April. I'm sure April's told you all about me. Haven't you, April? I followed her out here just to make sure she didn't take any detours. It's okay. The only thing she didn't tell me is your price. One hundred thousand dollars. One hundred thousand dollars. Come on, man, you're on a trip. Yeah, it's a bargain with what I've got. Where's the bargain? In my head. Well, there's nothing bashful about you, is there? Look, number one, I don't have that kind of cash. And number two, I don't buy blind. All right, then take me to Joe Barker. He's got the cash and he's got Dave Falk. We validate each other. Who says Barker's got Falk? Come on, Tony, if I work out, you make a lot of points with the old man. If I don't, I lose, not you. You're right, you lose. You lose a lot. I've got some calls to make. Join me. Thanks. You've given up ice water? I needed this. Why didn't you tell Tony I was setting him up for Frank? Maybe I didn't want to think that he was dead. Is that the only reason? I sure can't think of any other. I'm hating myself right now, Doug. I'm not sure why. Well, April, I think all of a sudden you know that there's something missing in you. You don't have any feelings. You've got desires, but you don't have any feelings. You don't care who gets hurt as long as you get what you want. And I think you're worried that someday someone is going to kill you for that. Maybe. Meanwhile, is there anything I can do for you? No. State Employment Service uh, down in Chula Vista. They uh, said you had a listing for a beekeeper. Just a minute. I've got a beekeeper type down here from the Employment Services. He has everything he needs in the truck. How much narrower than standard is it? About seven inches. References? Yeah, I, I ran a honey farm near Hamey uh, for uh, Dr. Lowry down there. He's uh, he's uh, out of San Diego. Mm -hmm. How come you're not there anymore? Well, the doc sold a farm. Read the letter. It uh, tells him. All right, the job pays $100 a week plus board. Oh, yeah? That's all right. It's okay. Okay, open up the back of the truck. What for? 
But we got special ways of doing things here. I have to get used to them. So either open the truck or get out of here. It's that simple. Well, there's nothing much back there. Uh-oh, the hives are spilled. Been around bees much? No, I hate them. Well, they're all right until you get them mad. Yeah. Then you gotta watch out. Well, they'll settle down, but it's uh, going to take a while. OK, OK, just close it up. All right. Follow me in. All right. couple of hundred of them. And they're in pretty bad shape. Well, that's what I'm here for. Oh, Darrow, don't come up to the house without permission. OK. What are you doing here, Tony? I gotta see Joe. He's not here. He will be. Who's he? What's the difference? He's with me. Open him! Against the car. Come on, I've been searched and researched. It's just a job. He's okay. All right. Thanks for the ride, Jim. Welcome back, Mr. Barker. Marla, did you have a nice time? Very nice, Everything thanks. all right? Yeah. Tony brought back a fed with him, with something to sell. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and we got a new beekeeper. They're inside. Uh, tell them I want to see them. Fine, Mr. Barker. Thank you, Inspector. Mr. Barker, this is Miss Hayes. My yes. pleasure. That's been a long time. What has? I'm sorry, your perfume. I used to go with a girl who wore it. Uh, Corel, isn't it? I 
That's right. Correct. Yes. Tell us about yourself, Inspector. Hey, Darrow. Hey, Darrow. Darrow. Yeah. What do you want? The boss wants to meet you. What's the arrangement? I dictate half my material. You check it against Falk. If you're satisfied, you turn over half the money. Then I finish the job. The uh, beekeeper. Darrell? This is uh, Mr. Parker. Hi. How are you? What do you think of the old hives? Well, they need some work. I'm going to have to go through every one of them out there and uh, replace the queens. Why is that? Well, the queens are from two to three years old. They, that affects the workers, you see. They, they become hard to handle, and they don't produce well. Oh, I see. Yeah, the new queens will run you maybe three bucks a piece. That'll total about uh, $600. I, I know that's a, a lot of money, but... 600 <laughs> Well, I guess we can afford 600 Order whatever you need, Darrow. I want a good product. I use a lot of it. I see. Thank you. What's wrong with your arm? Oh, I, uh, I pulled a muscle or something. Uh, sorry. Keep your eye on her. It's your business, but I'd feel a lot better if it was just you and Tony and me. I have no secrets from Marla. It's all right. I have to go freshen up anyway, Joe. Okay. Uh, first interrogation session, October 14th. The president decides myself. We're all the members of Federal Task Force One. These included. Jameson, O'Neill, Andrews, uh, Solomon, and Heaton. Falk described Barker's skimming operations. Said that Barker had skimmed over 220,000 a week, right off the top.
Yeah, that's him. <laughs> I'll take him in. Good job, Connors. Nothing, Joe. But lies. Well, nobody's condemning you, Dave. Not yet. We have a friend of yours here. Hi, Dave. Who are you? Oh, come on, Dave. I don't know him. Joe. Joe, you gotta listen to me. I got more from the feds than I ever gave them. It was Marla. Well, what's the difference? You're not gonna like this. But I can prove what I'm gonna say. Marla's a federal agent. She's a plant. I can prove it. Ask Marla to come down, please. What about it? No, I never heard anything about a plant. Sorry, I thought it was locked. Joe wants to see you right away. Something wrong? I don't know. What is it, Joe? But Dave's got something to say to you. I don't have anything to say. The bracelet. The bracelet's got a bug in it. What? Yeah. I heard the tapes were made from it. But Joe, he's insane. You don't believe him, do you? Please. See that. She 
switched it. She was tipped off. She switched it. Forgive me, Mom. Dave, I, uh, I want to give you a chance to live. Yeah, I know you do. Tell us what you told the feds. Everything. So we know where we stand. And who knows, you may just end up somewhere out of the country with enough money to get along on. Sound good to you? Yeah. Then let's start with your first interrogation session. October 14th, I think. You remember it? Yeah, yeah I think so. Who's there? Uh, me and an agent named Reed, Bill Reed. No one else? No, and um, stenotypist. Uh, what'd you talk about? Nothing really. It's just uh, the old protection rackets in New York and so on. First interrogation session, October 14. Present beside myself were all members of Task Force One. These included uh, Jameson, O'Neill, Andrew, Solomon, and Heaton. Falk described uh, Barker's skimming operation. He said that Barker had skimmed just over uh, 220,000 a week right off the top. He also said that he expanded his operation from Nevada into several illegal Joe, enterprises. Joe, all lies, I swear. All of it. I didn't say. Shut up. Illinois. Other Why would Illinois. I lie? What, what can I gain? You save your life. Make Mr. Barker think that everything you gave us was just useless information. You buy some time. Well, that's what I'm doing here, to keep you from pulling anything like that and make a few bucks for myself. Who are you? I don't know you. <laughs> Maybe they're both lying. Why don't we lock them both up until they decide to quit playing games? Yes. That makes sense. Well, why lock me up? I don't get it. You better come through with one story. Well, you're both dead. You know the room. trying to do to me. What are you doing? Come on, knock it off, Dave. You don't have to play anymore. We're alone. The important thing to remember is that you are going to die. Now, look, Dave. If you'll tell the truth, I'll do my best for you with Barker. After all, you were a uh, reluctant witness. You didn't want to talk, but you probably figured that was the only chance you had. Which one? Uh, how about the one where John Heaton threatened to take away your privileges? How am I supposed to remember something that didn't happen? You don't remember Heaton's threat to arrange for you to be transferred to the Atlanta Penitentiary? No, I don't. I've already told Barker about my being in on all of your interrogations. Still, I don't know what you're after trying to save both of our lives. Now, there may be other sources of information besides us. You know what you're dealing with even better than I do.
See you, Doug. Well, just what you'd like to know. Joe Barker was just arraigned before the chief magistrate in San Diego for the conspiracy charge. That's crazy. Tony Boyd's being indicted this afternoon, and that's just the beginning of their troubles. Congratulations. Hey, Doug. how's the arm, huh? Oh, it's fine. Good as new. See that? And the undercover girl, is she okay? Marla, she's great, yes. It's fine. Now, Carrie tells me you got a big race coming up this weekend. Oh, yeah. Well, well we were just on our way to Washington, so. We thought we would. Oh, 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 just give you this in advance, huh? Oh, hey, man. Hey, thank you, Doug. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's all right. I uh, tell you, Carrie, I uh, really feel like you can win this one. I haven't felt that way in a long time. Good luck. Hey, Emmett. You know something? I've always wanted to take a spin around one of these tracks. Oh, have you? <laughs> okay, buddy, come on. <laughs> <laughs> 